friends, this is our last video covering these biology topics. We are going to learn more about the specifics of natural selection today in some adaptations. It has been a pleasure talking with you about these biology topics. And remember to rewatch, rewind as much as possible to help you ace those biology topics. Thank you so much for learning with me. Have a super awesome day, super awesome year, and never forget that science rocks. So, open up your Google Drive or Spiral Notebook and take some awesome last notes. Copy down these 15, only 15 vocab words. Remember, they go in A, B, C order like this. And just come back later, create your own definitions of these words. Go ahead and pause this if you need to finish writing down the terms. Some organisms have favorable traits that are well suited to their immediate environment. So organisms with this advantage are more likely to thrive, to reproduce, and to pass these traits on to future generations than organisms without such traits. So this process is known as natural selection. Charles Darwin propose that natural selection occurs when the following criteria are met, okay? Overproduction, so a species produces more offspring than will survive to maturity. Genetic diversity, the individuals within this species population are all genetically slightly different from each other. Number three, struggle to survive. Individuals of the population must struggle to access resources and or avoid predators. And number four, successful reproduction. Individuals that are successful at surviving are able to reproduce and pass their genes on to their offspring. Mutations in sexual reproduction are sources of genetic variation among living organisms. So, mutations are significant. They're a significant source of genetic variation. Mutations are responsible for introducing new traits and new versions of existing traits. And then sexual reproduction results in an offspring that has a combined genetic material from both parents, which contributes to genetic variation. So mutations may be helpful, harmful, or have no effect on an organism at all. They may change an organism's appearance, their physiology, or their behavior. A mutation has produced a new color in this pattern um, of butterflies here. This increases the diversity of that population. So there's three main patterns of natural selection. All right, let's start off here with stabilizing selection. This type of selection involves selecting an intermediate or like middle um, or highly represented phenotype. Okay, over time, the extreme phenotypes, meaning the ones on the edges, either really low or really high, that would be the extreme phenotypes within this distribution are selected against. Okay, so not as many. And the intermediate, the one in the middle, phenotype becomes more dominant within that population. Okay, stabilizing selection is usually associated with a population that is well adapted to its environment. So this type of selection is the most common and tends to suggest that the ecosystem in which the population lives is also pretty stable. Okay, so you can look at the original population and then the stabilizing selection curve, which um, has that middle or intermediate phenotype selected the most. Okay, so directional selection occurs when a particular phenotype on the extreme end of the distribution is highly favored. So here's your original population and it moves to the one of the extreme ends is highly favored favored. So this causes the dis distribution to like shift over successive generations so that the extreme phenotype becomes more common. This type of selection is often associated with environmental changes like 
stronger beaks in a population of birds could be selected over weaker varieties if seeds develop thicker coatings over time and they need that stronger beak. So if the beak size went from weaker to medium to strong and the seeds became very thick, those birds needed that thicker or stronger beak. Okay, so that's directional selection. Disruptive selection, also known as diversifying selection, this type of selection actually favors two or more extreme, so the sides, both sides, phenotypes over the intermediate ones, okay? So over time, the previously intermediate phenotype becomes extremely rare and may even disappear. So because it tends to split populations into separate groupings, all right, disruptive selection may lead to reproductive isolation and eventual speciation even when the populations are not geographically separated. All right, let's look at these examples of all three curves where all three are actually talking about an animal's tail length. Okay, so starting off at this directional selection one, we've got tail length across the, the x-axis with short, medium, and long tails. And you see in directional selection, it's moving over and the environment is now favoring the long tails. Okay, so this long wiggly tail looks like a snake and can scare predators. All right, so the longer the tail, the more it looks like a snake and the more it can scare predators and the more that they, the greater chance that they have to survive and reproduce and their offspring will also have that long tail. So directional selection. Here's a stabilizing selection example. All right, you still have the short, medium, and long tails across your X axis and we're looking at this cat. Short tails mess up the cat's balance and long tails drag on the ground. Okay, so this is stabilizing selection where it favors the medium tails the best. So disruptive selection, we are looking at this squirrel and short tails keep predators from catching you on the ground. Okay, so they're saying short is good and long tails are good for balance up in the trees. So it's saying long is also good and the medium tails don't really help at all. Okay, so that's disruptive selection. All right, something called genetic drift and gene flow are two mechanisms that can change the genetic makeup of a population over time. Gene flow is the transfer of genetic information from one breeding population to another. So gene flow can be caused by many different events. For example, a storm with strong winds could blow pollen from one population of plants to another. All right, other causes of gene flow are immigration and emigration, okay? If you look at immigration, it's the movement of individuals into a population, okay, or ecosystem. Emigration is the movement of individuals out of a population or ecosystem. So the concepts of immigration and emigration are demonstrated in this illustration. So the immigration of an individual with two alleles coding for white feathers, looks like it's homozygous recessive, will increase the genetic diversity of population B. Make sure to take the time to watch this video sometime about natural selection. Last practice questions of this biology series. So number one, over the years, bacteria have become less sensitive to antibiotics used for medicinal and sanitation purposes. This lack of sensitivity is termed antibiotic resistance. How is antibiotic resistance an adaptation? So pause this, look it over, and see what you come up with. All right, so an adaptation is an inherited trait that has become common in a population because the trait provides a selective advantage. So a bacterium that is resistant to destruction 
by an antibiotic has a selective advantage over a bacterium that is susceptible to antibiotics. So because of this, according to the principles of natural selection, bacteria resistant to antibiotics have flourished and become common. So if we look at our answer choices, that's going to go with A. Number two, which of the following graphs represents disruptive selection? Okay, so look back in your notes if you don't remember and see what the graph looks like for disruptive selection. Okay, remember it favors two or more extreme phenotypes, the ones on the end, over an intermediate one. So over time, the intermediate phenotype becomes rare um, and may even disappear in the two extreme phenotypes are very common. So that matches up with D. Number three, peppered moths use the adaptation of camouflage as protection from predators. They may have a variety of colors or shades, but before the Industrial Revolution, they were typically white with black speckles. The Industrial Revolution in the 1880s introduced large-scale pollution into the environment. The pollution resulted in widespread dark-colored staining of buildings and trees. So, which of the following was the most likely effect of the Industrial Revolution on peppered moths in cities. All right, look these over and see what you think. Okay, so after the Industrial Revolution began, the pollution began staining the buildings and trees in this dark, blackish color. So, while on these dark surfaces, the light-colored peppered moths were much more visible to predators than before. Okay, on the other hand, the rare, the dark-colored pepper moths now had a new advantage. They were camouflaged well with these dark surfaces, okay? So they were less visible to predators. So the most likely effect of this in cities was that the population of light-colored moths decreased and the population of dark-colored moths increased. So that is D. Number four, several species of finch live on the Galapagos Islands. They are very similar in appearance but have adapted beaks of different sizes and shapes based on their major food source. Finches with Large beaks eat mainly large seeds and cacti. Finches with small beaks eat mainly small seeds and insects. Which of the following best explains the variety of beaks found in finches on the Galapagos Islands? So pause this, look at your answer choices, and see what you think. All right, natural selection can cause speciation, which increases the biodiversity of an ecosystem. Remember, the diversity of species is the result of speciation or the splitting in divergence of former species into new species. So it occurs as populations of organisms adapt to better fit their environment. So these finches on the Galapagos Islands developed beaks of different sizes and shapes based on the food sources that were easily accessible to them. All right, so if we look at our answer choices, that matches up with D. Number five, the last practice question in our biology series. These graphs show the difference between an initial population of colored lizards and the same population after 100 generations. So, which of the following is the most likely explanation for this difference? Okay, so look at your answer choices and see what you come up with. Okay, this initial population showed a variation, right? in color, with green being the average, while the final population showed a decrease in the frequency of green with a corresponding increase in the frequency of red and blue, okay? So there was some change in the environment that selected against the green but favored the red and the blue, 
Okay, remember that's called disruptive selection. So if we look at our answer choices, that matches up with A. Some change in the environment selected for red and blue lizards, but against the green ones. All right, guys, after you think you're a pro at natural selection and adaptation, you should be able to come up with a final project, presentation, or experiment and show your teacher that you know what you're talking about.